I guess the first thing I wanted to do is uh, thank you, Matthew, for uh, for showing up and uh, uh, for attending our session. I think you'll find it interesting. Um, it's We're going to go over our uh, direct consumer depletion optimization tool. Um, I want to start out by thanking the Wine Industry Network for putting on the sales symposium of the past two days and, and giving us the opportunity um, to share this, uh, as well as some very uh, interesting sessions that I was able to sit in on. Um, you know, Matthew, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the, the chat feature and just send them to us. And we're also going to save a few minutes at the end for questions. And then um, our contact information is also there um, so that you can um, uh, send us a note and uh, we can also share these slides with you uh, as well. Um, and then I guess I'll just start by uh, introducing myself. I'm Bob Trezotis. I'm the Executive Vice President of Mather Economics Business Development. And with me is Matt Lule, and he is our uh, Managing Director of uh, Consulting Services, and his team um, uh, really handles all of our wine analytics. So, um, you know, welcome. I'll tell you a little bit about our company. Uh, first of all, Mather Economics is, um, we're an economics consultancy. We're based out of Atlanta, Georgia. We've been around for about 19 years. We serve um, more than 200 clients uh, across the globe. And uh, we do that with a team of, um, uh, of more than 50 economists and data scientists. We're a little bit different in terms of uh, a consultancy that, that you might have dealt with in the past. We are um, a data science as a service uh, company. So Matt will tell you a little bit more uh, about what that means, but, but I'll give you the high level. So what it means um, to us is we become a part of your organization. Um, I think that's uh, particularly valuable in the wine industry um, as there are not a ton of uh, um, uh, analytics folks that are dedicated in each winery. Um, so, you know, having a, a resource like um, our company is, uh, is very important. Uh, we work in a number of industries, uh, media, magazines, uh, sports, lotteries, education, telecom, as well as the wine industry. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit about us. I think our value proposition to the wine industry is that, um, and really every other industry, is that we help our clients make their data actionable. So we're not providing a, a black box solution where the algorithm is the same for every single um, entity that we work with. We uh, want to understand your business model. We want to understand the challenges that you've you're facing, we don't understand the priorities um, that you're putting in play with those challenges. And then we want to use your own customer data to build the models to help you um, uh, really with insights into solving those problems, whether it's a campaign or it's a, it's a scenario building tool um, or any of those types of, of um, um, measures. And then from that, um, you know, we, we want to help you in executing those campaigns to to address those use cases and, and really solve that last mile problem. Um, and then by, by the fact that our relationship with you is one that is ongoing, uh, we wanna provide these tools to you, but we also wanna be there for, for the consultative part so that you'll be able to say, well, here's a new problem that we've come up with, or here's what, what we're thinking um, and how should we address that? And we can, and can look in, in the data and help you identify um, really the next best actions. Um, I think one of the the keys for us is um, is to be able to um, to be a part of your team and to um, you know in in whatever uh, form or fashion you need us, we can be there, but also provide that self service um, uh, factor so that you can um, really just uh, take the model and run with it, take the scored accounts and and uh, and run with them as well. So really, um, we're going to talk about the um, price elasticity um, and price optimization and inventory optimiz optimization tool today. But really, it's built on a platform that is um, uh, pretty simplified so that, that, um, that you can use that for a number of other direct-to-consumer uh, challenges, whether it's churn prevention, um, it is uh, uh, 
a wine club um, acquisition and reacquisition modeling. And from that, we can um, we can set up set up some standard um, campaigns for you. And as I mentioned, we have the the uh, self serve option. Um, but I think uh, our ability to to consult with you and help um, identify A B testing opportunities within those campaigns um, is is really a, a, a big win for for our clients because. Um, you need to spend your time making wine and take care of your customers and we'll take care of the heavy lifting on uh, the data side. So I mentioned heavy lifting. So one of our um, benefits to our clients is that we do that heavy lifting for you. We don't expect you to, to have to, to deal with the data. We want you to give us access to your data um, uh, through a login to your, uh, um, your fulfillment vendor and uh, any other data that you, you think we need. And then from there, we're going to build the models and we're going to keep the models up and we're going to, to be able to, uh, to, to do that and for you. And then the ongoing consulting and planning. Um, and that can be to, to whatever level you need. It can be a monthly call. Um, you know, again, we want you to spend your time figuring out how you want to best use the data and let us do the hard work. And then I won't touch on all of these because I've uh, mentioned several of them, but I, I want to do want to touch on a couple of the keys. Um, I, and it really, it's uh, one of the questions that come up when we're talking to uh, to uh, potential clients is how soon can I start to see some actionable insights and in campaigns? And that's in the first six to eight weeks after we have the data. Um, they want to understand, um, you know, how the models are built. We're happy to share as much detail as you want. There's a, a lot of folks that really want to know all the details, and others that just want, you know, we just want the campaigns. Um, and it's custom, um, and I think the um, um, the ability to um, to show you the return on investment is is very important. Uh, as economists, uh, our team they want to measure everything. They want to understand. They want you to understand that by doing the kinds of campaigns or the scenario building and the pricing changes that you might um, choose to make, we're going to benchmark that against your business as usual. And then we're going to measure because at the end of the day, you want to understand this is what I paid Mather Economics and this is the return I got. And we want to make sure that that is, is at least five to one on a return on investment, if not higher. And I think the other um, thing that is, is very important to us is to be able to, to let you know that we have skin in the game. So we don't have a long-term commitment. We're not making you sign a one or two year agreement. You can always leave us with 30 days notice. I will also tell you that we have 97% client retention. So um, you know, we, we, we want to have skin in the game and we want to keep score and we want you to, to uh, be happy with what we're doing. So um, that's a little bit about the company. Um, I, I also remind you, if you have questions, just uh, type them in the chat. And also, um, I'll, I'll turn it over to Matt now and he can uh, uh, take you through the, um, the depletion tool. Thanks, Bob. Um, so that was a great overview of the of the company. And uh, before I jump into a quick demo of the tool, um, just wanted to give everybody a sense of of how we generally partner with um, the wineries that we work with. Um, it's usually a, a four stage process. And so, as as Bob mentioned, we do all of the heavy lifting, so we don't really require any any uh, data transformation or data transfer process on the part of the of the winery that we're working with. Um, once we have access to uh, your fulfillment system, we really take care of the rest. And um, by the time we come back to you the next time, you're, we're presenting insights um, and uh, recommendations for how to improve the business outcomes. Um, so the first step, just very quickly, is uh, we go through a data ingestion process. Um, and that's where we work with the fulfillment system to pull a few different reports. Um, generally, that's going to be a sales history, um, a look at uh, a historical view of of club membership, so who's coming in and out of the club and when, and what are the characteristics of those uh, individuals. Um, and then what's really important to our depletion tool is the inventory transaction reports out of the major uh, data platforms. Um, we usually augment some of that data for our predictive models with uh, some macroeconomic information uh, that we pull from the Federal Reserve and the Bureau of Labor Statistics and a few other sources. Uh, from there, we move into the actual uh, kind of meat of the project, which is building out the predictive models. And this is where we add a lot of value um, on top of that, <clears throat> excuse me, that first party data that uh, you already own. Um, so this is where we do some of the price sensitivity modeling uh, that feeds into the depletion tool uh, for your current club members. 
uh, taking a look at the features and the attributes that are associated with churn risk uh, so that we can take some action on those to reduce that risk. Um, and then for reacquisition modeling, it's similar where we take a look at the feature set of former club members uh, that are predictive of them actually rejoining the club. Um, and then we do some work on the tasting room analytics side with some demand forecasting. Uh, after we build those models, we go into a recommendation phase, and this is really where the consultative aspect of our partnership would come into play, uh, where instead of just giving you a dashboard and walking away, we would come together uh, with our team of economists and consultants um, and do a readout of what we have seen in your consumer data. Um, so this is where we would take a look at um, some of the recommendations and, and insights from the modeling itself. Uh, take a look at how we can use some of those insights uh, to actually drive some actions to either improve pricing, uh, better manage inventory, um, or improve some of the outcomes with your club. Um, from there, it's uh, like Bob mentioned, we always like to keep score. So that's where we do all of the ROI reporting. Um, everything we, we do is, uh, is really driven by you know, improving the bottom line. So uh, we do have a very robust set of reports built out in Tableau where we're tracking uh, the performance of campaigns that we're helping you run um, or the, the, the impact of, of making any pricing and inventory changes. So just a, um, just a little bit of background of why we got into pricing optimization and inventory management in the wine space. Um, really, as Bob mentioned, our core competency as a firm is really in pricing optimization and using some statistical tools to be able to identify price sensitivity, either at the customer level, uh, which is helpful uh, from a club perspective, but also from a product level, which is uh, very helpful from uh, a SKU perspective and how to manage the inventory by using price. Um, when we first got into wine, when we were meeting with executives and leaders at wineries, we, we found out that pricing was a particular challenge. Um, we heard from wineries from very small to very, very large that they didn't really have a great handle on pricing. Um, and their current approach to making these decisions was really driven by their gut. Um, and so we knew there was an opportunity there as long as we could find the data uh, to be able to use our skill set to, to apply some value. So um, we spent uh, really the better part of the last year developing this depletion optimization tool to help solve some of those uh, pain points that wineries had. Um, as it says at the top there, really the, the, the end goal of the depletion optimization tool is to be a decision-making framework for leadership at wineries to be able to forecast um, pricing scenarios, inventory management, um, and just make better decisions to, to manage their entire portfolio of wines. Um, there's a few key features of the tool that we'd like to highlight, and we'll talk about those in the, in the screenshots coming up. Uh, the, the first one is just being able to standardize and visualize uh, the actual data that's in those inventory transaction reports. Um, and so as, as many of you know, um, the inventory data that's stored in the major fulfillment systems is really, really useful and helpful, but it's uh, a little bit challenging to, uh, to get a hold of and make sense of without a lot of time and effort cleaning that data up and putting it in a format that uh, is intuitive. And so the first part of this process is we apply uh, several hundred lines of code to take that data out of those systems and make it into something that's visually uh, digestible. Um, the second step is where we apply a lot of value on top of that data, which is doing some of that predictive modeling. Um, so we, we use some demand models that give us a sense of how sensitive to price um, your consumers are to your particular set of SKUs uh, within your portfolio of wines. Um, so that's really quantifying the relationship between price and demand. Um, and then the third part is building forecasts for your remaining inventory within the, the current sales year and current vintage release. Um, and then uh, the last part here is, is really what the, the intended goal of the tool is, which is being a scenario making planning you know, tool set. Um, so this is where you can input different uh, scenarios to your pricing across your uh, series of SKUs and see what that does to your ability to generate revenue, uh, but also the implications to your depletion rate. Um, this is uh, something that's in ongoing development. And so we, we have some features that are in development now and several others in the works. Um, so being able to do some short-term promotion planning, uh, filtering these sets of data by, by different channels um, and all of those things will be in 
uh, future iterations of the tool release. Um, so this is uh, uh, just a screenshot of the tool in Tableau. Um, so we do host all of our reporting platform in Tableau. Um, and this is something uh, for the wineries that we work with. Uh, every, every winery gets a unique login, set of login credentials to this tool. Um, so you'd be able to log into this website um, and actually look at all of your own consumer data um, all in one place in a you know, easy to, to use format. Um, this is obviously the depletion tool. Um, and so uh, in the next couple of slides, I'll just walk you through some of the features in detail. Um, the first one here, which is key, is just being able to, to look at all of the SKUs in your portfolio of wine. So in the upper left-hand corner of this dashboard, there's a drop-down menu. Um, so on the screen now, we just have a, a sample Pinot Noir um, for a winery. Um, if you have six SKUs in your uh, portfolio, there would be six listed there in the drop down. If you had 20, there would be 20. Uh, so it's a very easy way to, to go through and quickly assess um, the performance of different, different wines. Um, the next feature here is um, really where the rubber meets the road. And so this is where we apply some of that, uh, some of that code to take the, the raw inventory transaction reports and plot the depletion of each of those vintage years uh, within the same SKU. Um, so the way to read this chart, it's pretty intuitive, but on the y-axis is just the percentage depletion um, against 100%, which is the remaining or the, the initial balance of one. And then um, on the x-axis here is number of weeks since first sale. Um, so we're actually tracking the depletion of the beginning balance of inventory by week um, until it sells out um, or wine is moved to a library program, et cetera. Um, so that's the way to read the chart. The second step here is on the right, which is um, on the back end, we do a lot of work with those predictive models to uh, actually estimate all of the uh, price sensitivities or price elasticities of all the SKUs. Um, these models are run entirely on your first party data. So we are not relying on benchmark information um, or Nielsen data or anything else. Um, so they're not generic price sensitivities of CABSOV or Merlot. Um, these are the actual uh, sensitivities to price that we estimate on, on your unique set of wines. Um, so the next step from there after we have those price sensitivities is we apply a forecast of your remaining inventory. Um, so all of the gray lines in that chart are actuals, observed actuals of inventory depletion. And then what we do is we use some uh, statistical methodologies to forecast the remaining inventory um, of the current sales year. Um, so in this case, you can see for the 2017, they're about halfway through uh, the sales of that, uh, of that release. Um, and so we forecast the depletion rate uh, for the rest of that 50% of the inventory um, until we can actually um, forecast when that will sell out. So in this case, it looks like we're forecasting a sellout of around 76 weeks. The last part here is really a scenario planning tool. And so uh, this is where we really combine all of the features of the tool into one place so that you can use this as a dynamic forecast. Um, so in this box highlighted at the very top is where you can actually uh, implement or forecast different pr pricing scenarios for this given SKU. Um, so the price adjustment feature here is a place where you can input any sort of rate change that you wanted to observe. And you'd be able to uh, take a look at the implications of those moves, not only in terms of, of the inventory velocity and depletion, but also the revenue impacts on the remaining inventory. Um, so we'll take a quick look at, a, at a, uh, just a, a zoom in of one of these types of scenarios. Um, so on the same Pinot Noir here, we wanted to take a look at uh, what would happen if we were to um, uh, raise the price of this Pinot Noir by a certain percentage. Um, so as I mentioned, we were forecasting with a business as usual approach, so no price change, um, a sellout around week 76 or 77. Um, and you can see here down in the bottom right, we have some characteristics of the wine. Uh, so the list price, the retail price. Um, and then the net price, which is just the observed um, average discount that's being applied either through case discounts or club allotments um, that are going out to your, your members. Um, it also gives you a sense of how much remaining inventory um, is available based off the starting balance 
Um, so you can see here, we have about 1,400 bottles um, available uh, for the 2017 Pinot. And that was off an initial balance of about 2,600 bottles. So in this case, we wanted to see um, if we were to plug in, let's say a 30% price adjustment here, um, you could do that easily in the tool. Um, what that does is the dynamic tool will, will update the forecast for the depletion. Um, so in this case, we're going from a sellout of 77 weeks to 83 weeks, uh, which is of course a six week um, bump. And then we can observe some of the revenue impacts of that change. Um, so the 30% rate adjustment would take your, your retail price from $50 to $65. Um, and on those remaining, you know, roughly 1,400, 1400 bottles, we'd be able to generate about $18,000 in incremental revenue. Um, so this is just uh, taking a look at the tool and the observed change um, in the forecasted depletion um, and being able to take a look at those, those observed effects. Um, so as I mentioned, this is really, uh, the, the goals of the tool are really twofold. It, it's, it's meant to be a scenario planning tool to uh, take a look at, A, how price sensitive we think uh, current SKUs are within the portfolio, um, and being able to manage pricing um, and also inventory uh, to make the correct moves to, to, to meet your objectives within the winery. Um, so obviously, this example here is um, an example of raising the price by some amount. Um, and certainly, you know, if, if this winery was okay moving the depletion date out by a month and a half, they'd be able to generate quite a bit of a return in revenue. Um, but there are also examples um, which this tool can handle of being able to target discounts off of the retail price. And so you can imagine uh, being able to lower the price and accelerate instead of decelerate that rate of depletion. So that's also something you'd be able to manage in this tool as well. Um, so just a quick case study. Uh, I know we're coming to the bottom of the hour. Um, uh, this was actually a winery that we were using this tool with in, in Paso and a fairly new winery. They only had two uh, releases, two vintage releases, um, and they were having some, some struggle actually keeping the wine around long enough uh, to be able to serve in the tasting room. Um, and as a new winery, that was a major goal. Uh, for them was making sure that they had the wine available to uh, serve to new prospective customers. And so um, what we did is we took an initial look in particular at their, their cab solve, which was a problem area for them. Um, you can see here the gray, that initial gray line depleted very quickly in the previous sales year at around 24 weeks. Um, so sold out very, very fast. Um, and he wanted to be able to keep this wine around a little longer. Um, so what we did is we did some, some of the analysis we pre previously mentioned. Uh, so taking a look at the estimated price sensitivity. Um, what we found, which is intuitive because of the depletion rate, is that the elasticity was quite low, uh, which meant that there was some room uh, perhaps to raise the price and, and only uh, you know, just barely reduce that rate of depletion on the inventory. Um, so we recommended... Uh, actually a 50% rate adjustment upward, uh, which was quite dramatic. Um, and he wasn't, uh, the owner of this winery wasn't quite ready to go up that high to extend the depletion out to a full year. Um, so we landed actually at a 20% at a increase in price. Um, and so once that was implemented, you can see that, that dotted blue line, which was when we implemented the rate adjustment. Um, at the time, he only had about 30% of his inventory remaining. Um, but we were able to slow that rate of depletion um, a little bit, keep that wine available in the tasting room, um, and we're able to generate some incremental dollars for him at the same time. So being able to uh, meet his objectives and also generate some, some additional cash flow. Um, so this is something where we're, with the success we had with that SKU, we're, we're doing across his entire product portfolio as well. Um, so it's, it's proven to be a, a pretty useful tool for, for him at this winery. A couple of other... Um, um, oh, I'm sorry, Matt, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, just to, to wrap up, um, one of the things I forgot to mention is, is that we do update these, uh, the data that feeds into this tool every week. Um, so it's not just a static forecast that we give to you and, and leave you to it for the whole year. It's something we do uh, keep updated so we can track the performance of the results um, and making sure that you, you have access to the most up-to-date information. That's exactly what I wanted to make sure we, we made it point. Um, you, 
you can see our contact information up there. We have uh, a, a few minutes left. If, if there are any questions, uh, you certainly can type them in the chat, but we're, we're a small enough group where if you just wanna unmute yourself and ask the question, we're happy to, uh, to address those questions. Uh, hi guys, I, I was I was curious, uh, is it possible to use the model to say, I'm targeting a certain amount of revenue by a certain number of weeks? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, you certainly could use this uh, uh, to, to predict um, with that level of price sensitivity, um, where you would need to move the price to in order to achieve a certain revenue amount. Um, and you could do that within the, within the SKU itself or as a portfolio of wines if you wanted to be able to set you know, ceilings or floors on price to be able to do that across um, an entire portfolio of wine. Good question. And we're happy to, to uh, you know, have a one-off call and really kind of walk you through that show you the live dashboard so you can see how you would exactly do that. Yeah, apologies, excuse me, apologies for joining late, but I think I'll have some follow-up questions. I'll reach out to you guys individually. Perfect, perfect. Oh, yeah, real interesting stuff. I love this kind of stuff, so that's awesome. Thank you. Great. Jim, you're a return um, uh, attendee, so uh, did, you, did you miss something from day one or did you have some other questions? I unfortunately missed day one, so I'll have to reach out to you guys. No, no problem. Thanks, Matt. I, I, you know, I did. I, you know, I'm a, I am a repeater because it never hurts to hear the message more than once. Um, so uh, I, uh, I, I like to make sure that I understand what I'm seeing and you know taking taking full taking full risk uh, full ownership of kind of what the potential looks like. So, yeah, so um, I think there's lots of, there's lots of potential, you know, here, there's lots of potential with kind of what you all are doing and what we're trying to do and uh, just trying to triangulate, you know, our strategies with, uh, you know, great resources. So that's the, that's the reason for double dipping. Great. Well, Jim, we'd be happy to have a call with you whenever you, uh, you yeah. want to do more detail. We, you know, that's kind of what we love doing, talking about uh, strategy, where you want to go, and, and uh, you know, just let us know when you like to chat. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, so it's, it's all good. Uh, yeah, thanks for offering the service, and uh, this is really helpful. Awesome. All right, well, listen, uh, we're at the bottom of the hour. We certainly appreciate everybody who joined us and uh, uh, we'll, we'll catch up uh, at some time in the future, hopefully.